YouTubers, Sandy McIver here, Stampin' and Blogging, Stampin' with Sandy, and today's video I am going to do the floating re technique and show you how I got all these crazy, wild, sexy colors in my flowers on these cards. Aren't they awesome? Okay, so I'm using watercolor paper for this, and this is 90 pound uh, cold pressed. You can also use shimmery white cardstock, okay? The one difference is, is it will take a little bit longer to dry because it's got an additional finish on it, but the nice part about it is the shimmer comes through the re inker and makes for very very pretty flowers okay so you need a well because we're going to be mixing some colors I'm using melon mambo daffodil delight and tangerine tango ignore that one that was strawberry slush and I ended up not liking it you need some paper towel you also need an aqua painter for each of the colors that you're going to play with and you need an aqua painter with just water in it and if um, you have a hard time seeing what I did was I put a tiny tiny little bit of blue in my clear so that when I flooded my flower I could see where it was wet okay so the first thing I'm going to do is show you what I do with the ink I put three or four drops into the well and then I grab the one okay so which one's which here <laughs> okay orange pink yellow I think yep and add a couple of drops just sque squeeze your aqua painter and get a little bit of water in there and mix it up a little bit okay and you want to keep the clean ones away from the ones that are dirty alright there we go okay so I'm going orange pink yellow orange yellow pink and I have my embossed flowers. Okay, and this flower is from Garden and Bloom, just in case you're wondering. Uh, Stampin' Up, of course. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to squeeze your aqua painter and you're going to flood every one of these little petals, okay? And normally when I tell you when we're watercoloring, I tell you that we don't want puddles. We do, in fact, want a hill of water. And that's why I emboss. So I black embossed each of the flowers. That way they've got a little hill and it's going to hold my water in for me. All right. My aqua painter doesn't want to play very nice today. It's tired. Okay. I think I've got water in each one. So you got to decide which one's going to be your primary color. And for this one, I've decided that my pink is. Okay. Now, here goes the floating reanchor part. Watch. Woohoo! Isn't that cool? Okay. So load up your ink each time. And you're going to let that little guy just run. Okay, and I'm putting a spot in each one. And then what you can do is you can go back and move it around if you want to. And so I like to kind of make a little curly with each one. And so then what I'm going to do for this one, let's do the orange. Orange needs a little bit of water in it. It looks a little thick there. Okay, so I'm just going to grab the orange. And I'm going to start it up here at the top and just let it run a little bit. So remember, you want one primary color and then the secondary color is going to be a much smaller amount, okay? So you want it kind of as a highlight. And you can also, again, run it down the edges, pick it up and move it in the water. You don't want to smear it though, okay? and zipping along the edge there and I'm going to pull that one down there and that one there. Now the cool thing is is you're going to add more water to the center and then I'm going to add the yellow to the center and if it touches any of the other water it will run into it. Isn't that cool? So that's where the floating comes in. Okay so if it's not running like this little guy right here that means that it's not wet enough so I'm going to add a little bit more water, okay? And so the other thing that you want to watch out for too are these little white spots. So that meant that the water didn't get right in there. And if you just touch it with the brush, it will move the water, which will move the ink. And then you won't have any white spots, okay? So let me do another one for you. Let's start over here. You want to make sure that you're working on a very, very flat surface. And if the other thing is is you're making quite a mess so what I do is I cut out four or five pieces of my watercolor paper I emboss all of them and then I sit down with my mess and I play and I get all five of my art pieces done and then I put my mess away and then I make my cards otherwise you know where the ink goes okay I got all my flooding done this time I'm going to do a yellow one so I'm going to start with yellow as my primary color 
So I'm going to load it in and let it run. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I just love this technique. It's so much fun. Okay, and so for my secondary color, I like the pink. Oh, no, let's do the orange. We haven't played with orange too much. Okay, so I'm just going to add a small amount of orange because I want the primary color to be yellow. So more or less just kind of around the center, maybe a little bit. And you want to make sure that it's nice and bright because remember it's going to kind of dull up a little bit as it dries. Cool or what? Love it! Okay, so I want more water in the center. Whoa, shot that right into the petal. And I'm going to load some more yellow into the center. And now I'm just going to touch up a couple of my little white spots. Just so as you know. There we go. Little guy down there. And I'm going to run that guy. And I see that one went off onto my work surface. So you can tape these down if you want. I didn't because I'm kind of moving them around. But that's the idea behind it. And now, of course, you have to let it dry. Okay, so the other thing you can do is work on a piece of paper towel. And that way, if it goes over the edge, it'll just wick it up for you. Um, and you can also work on a piece of cardboard like I like to do. Okay, so once again, I'm going to bring a couple of these back in just so that we can chat. Okay, so this guy was a little short one, and it was three and an eighth by four and three eighths, and then there's a black mat that was three and a quarter by four and a half, and I used all three of the colors on this, and I'm going to go back in and add a little bit of white dots, and you'll also see that I had a little bit of splatter going on. I decided the background was a little bit too boring. Okay, so this one is the yellow and orange one. So this was this flower here, the second one that we did. That's exactly how I did that one. And then the first flower was actually these two guys, okay? So this is the pink and the orange, or the tangerine, and this is the pink and the orange, and I mixed a little bit more yellow in with this one, and I left this flower pink. So just kind of to give you, a, you know, a variety of things, and blues, blues and purples mixed together look really nice in these as well, as well as blue and green. And just in case you're making these, Cucumber Crush was the green that I used for the leaves. And again, I splattered the background of all of these too, but aren't they fun? I just love how they turned out, and this floating reinker technique anybody can do this you don't need any art experience at all so just get in there and have fun with it thanks so much for stopping in i hope you enjoyed the technique happy stamping and we'll see you again soon